over uh, the homework that you guys worked on yesterday. So page five from your packet. We're just going to go over page five and six. So if I can take uh, vertex down. Full of water, 10 feet across. All feet deep. Um, some water. Oh, sorry, it's full of the water. I'm going to put it a little bit lower, though. Water is flowing out of the tank at a rate of 12 cubic feet per minute. Find the rate at which the water level is dropping when the radius of the water is four feet. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and draw our right triangle within a triangle. So Make it the same way where we have to make an adjustment though. The 10 represents the diameter. We really want the radius. So 5, 12. And then R and H represents the radius and height of the small cone. We set up our proportions here. Radius of the small cone is to the radius of the large cone. As the height of the small cone is to the height of the large cone. Okay, cross multiply here. Okay, this is going to prove to be very helpful for us. Uh, 12R equals 5H. And the volume formula that we're going to be working with is pi over 3. R squared H. Okay, so we want to um, try to get that right side in terms of just R or just H. But um, right now we still don't know which one to replace. Okay. But we're going to try to get that information from the problem. Okay, so we know water is flowing out of the tank at a rate of 12 cubic feet per minute. So if the water is flowing out, uh, we know that's referring to uh, dv dt because we're talking about cubic feet. We know that's volume related per minute. There's also time component. So volume and time, that's going to narrow us down to just involving dvdt. Okay. okay, water's flowing out of the tank, so we know that's going to be a negative rate. Okay, find the rate at which the water level is dropping. So we're looking for dhdt, and so water level dropping. Um, um, we know that's related to the height, right? As height is dropping, then water level is dropping. So we know we're looking for dhdt. When the radius is three feet, so this is a little bit different here because normally. We're used to them giving us um, the height. So the radius four feet feels a little off. Um, but we really want to, uh, but the good news is that this R uh, is easily, um, can be easily adjusted uh, by using this formula, right? Um, because if I have the, the radius of the water level, I have a relationship between R and H, I can quickly insert R with four and solve for H. So that's going to be easy. 
So uh, what we need to understand is that this is what is going to help us decide how to move forward. OK, we're looking for DHTT. DHTT is related to H, so things will just be easier if we work our volume equation in terms of H, okay? which means that I want to find a replacement for R. I want the R to be removed because I want to get that R to be removed. I want to solve for R because I want to find a replacement for R. So if I solve for R here, divide both sides by 12, put a box around this because this, this is what we're going to have to come back to later on as well, but it's nice to just kind of understand that it's going to be used um, in multiple ways later on. I think R is equal to 5H over 12. Divide both sides by 12. And now I know that this piece can go in nicely for this R here. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so now we know the algebra that we, that's ahead of us. We want to get our uh, volume equation cleanly in terms of H. Okay, so V equals. Replace R with 5H over 12. Squared times H. We're just working through the homework from yesterday. OK, so next up, uh, we know we have quite a few uh, things ahead of us before we can get to the power rule, before we get to the DVDT, DHDT. We want all the uh, um, exponents to be cleaned up. We want all the coefficients together. We want the variables together. So go ahead and square each of those values that we see there. So 5 squared becomes 25. H squared is H squared. 12 squared is 144. Okay, merge everything together as one fraction. Um, a squared times H is H cubed. And then 3 times 144 is 432. Okay, so technically we're ready, but this is my preference. My preference is I like to push this uh, fraction out in front of my variable so that my variable uh, kind of uh, uh, becomes a little bit more prominent and I don't have to deal with thinking about, oh, what to do with that 432. I just think of it as oh, a number uh, along with that 25 pot or fraction that happens to be in front of my variable H. So this is, I feel, the cleanest presentation of um, our volume equation that allows us to make it easy on us when we find our derivative, right? Okay. Right, good so far? Okay, so now we can find the derivative. V becomes dv dt. The coefficient stays, and then the h cubed becomes 3h squared, and we attach that dh dt. OK, so now um, we are just going to start uh, plugging information in. So we have a DVDT, which is negative 12. We know we're looking for DHTT, and that's good because we have that variable pop up. We know that uh, it's available for us to solve. But there's one wrinkle here, and it's the fact that we want H, 
but we're given R. Okay. And uh, and as a reminder, this R was not used um, before, right? Because any value they give you for the radius or the height of the water level is never going to be used before the derivative. So we ignore that R, but we know that's going to be helpful to help us get to this H. And the way we get there is we use this ratio, use this proportion here. Okay, so we're going to step to the side here and find that H that we need, the height of the water level, which we need for this formula. Insert four in for R. Okay, divide both sides by five. So forty eight over five is equal to H. Okay, so we're going to take this H value and insert into our DVDT. So dvdt is negative 12, coefficient stays, h is 48 over 5 times dhdt. So now it's just a matter of um, dealing with all the multiplication, um, division, just cal um, calculate the work. Okay, I'm just going to try to multiply everything out here. 25, the 3, the 48 squared, that's going to all go in the numerator. Um, the 432, the 5 squared, that will go in the denominator. So I'm just trying to clean this fraction up before I move it over to the other side, because eventually I do want to get that DHCT by itself. OK, you can choose to reduce this fraction earlier if you like. Um, or you can just go ahead and bring it over. Um, if I want to bring over a fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. I'm going to make it switch sides. Notice again, pi is in the denominator. It needs to stay in the denominator. OK, my units of measure. And uh, DHDT is uh, H is height. That's one dimensional, so that's going to be feet per minute. Page five in the packet, let me know if you don't have it.
All right, any questions with? Oh, hold on. OK, so moving on to number two. Number two is related uh, and it will be a little faster um, now that we have this information from part A. So this is a good part number two here. Number two, same scenario, conical tank, vertex down, full of water 10 feet across 12 feet deep. If the water is flowing out of the tank at a rate of 12 cubic feet per minute, find the rate of change of the radius of the water level. So, so what's different here? What variable are we looking for? Yeah, we're looking for dr dt. Okay. Dr dt. So what we could do, okay, what we could do is we could start from scratch. Let me just show you what that looks like. We could, um, instead of solving for r, we could start for h, find a replacement for h, insert that um, h, Replace that H with 12R over 5. And we could get everything in terms of R, which is perfectly fine. Um, find a derivative. DRDT shows up. R shows up. Replace DVDT with negative 12. Replace R with 4, which is um, given to us there. And then just solve for DRDT, and we get a perfectly fine answer. Okay. Uh, the other option is because we have A in front of us, uh, we actually have a quicker way to get to DRDT if we know what DHDT is. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to rely on our equation that we built using similar triangles. We have this 12R equals 5H. This is going to help us get to where we want to go a lot faster. So. Let's talk about that. 12 R equals 5 H. Okay. And uh, the way we're going to get there is we're going to we have an equation uh, that is suitable for this problem, but we can also find the derivative of this equation with respect to time. So if we think about this, right? 12 R, what does 12 R become? 12. The RDT, right? R becomes one. R is still impacted by time, so dr dt. And 5h, what does 5h become? 5 dh dt. And we have a quick relationship here between dr dt and dh dt. And because we have dh dt from, from part A, that will insert itself nicely. We can quickly solve for dr dt without having to start from scratch. Um, and solve our equation in terms of R. Okay, so I'm just gonna move that 12 over, divide the 12 over. Dividing by 12 is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Again, pi is in the denominator, so it needs to stay in the denominator. Okay, multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together. You can reduce. Same units as, D, as uh, DHDT. Radius is a one dimensional unit, so that's feet. Time is uh, in um, minutes, so feet per minute. Okay, any questions with this volume problem here? Okay. All right. Um, 
Next up. Okay, helium is pumped into a spherical balloon at a constant rate of 25 cubic feet per minute. At what rate is the surface area of the balloon increasing uh, the moment when the diameter is 16 feet? Okay, so we have our um, volume and surface area uh, formula in front of us. We know we're going to involve the derivatives. I'm just going to go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay, so uh, every variable gets impacted by time. So V will become DVDT, R will become DRDT, S becomes DSDT. Okay, so we just go through our rule for each of these terms there. Four thirds pi is just a number that's hanging out in front of my variable. It's not gonna go anywhere. R cubed becomes three R squared, DRDT. Do a little bit of cleanup here. The numerator and denominator three can reduce. Okay. Go down the column for S. S becomes DSDT. Four pi stays. R squared becomes 2R, ER to T. Clean this up a little bit. Okay, so everything that we need is in front of us. Now we just gather some information from the problem. Helium is pumped into the spher uh, spherical balloon at a constant rate of 25 cubic feet per minute. The units of measure is going to be really helpful to decide which variable cubic feet. That's a three-dimensional um, three-dimensional unit. We know that's talking about volume. There's also minute involved, so and time, so dv over dt. At what rate is the surface area of the balloon increasing? So we know that's talking about surface area with time involved. So we're looking for DSDT. When the diameter is 16 feet. So diameter is 16 feet. We don't have an equation that needs diameter, but something related to the, to the diameter is what? Radius. Radius, right? So diameter is 16. They could have just told us radius is what? Eight. Eight. So I think that's a lot more helpful to us, right? So um, now let's see where we need to go. Uh, we're looking for DSDT. So we know um, if we have R and DRDT, we can find our answer. Now we do have R, so that's nice. We have R, we can replace R with eight, but we sh we're missing this DRDT. The idea is, well, we don't have DRDT, but we have DVDT. And can we think of a way where this DVDT can help us get to what we're looking for? So what's available to us that could help us get there? Plug it into one of the Okay, which equation? Um, the volume, volume of percent. Yeah, that's it, right? So I have DVDT is 25. So if I can just take this, insert it in here. I have radius as well, so this can help me solve for DRDT. And if I have DRDT, then I have the final piece of the puzzle that I need to get to what I want to find. So DVDT is 25. 4 pi R is 8. Multiply this out, divide over. <clears throat> 
64 times 4 is 256. Okay, divide both sides by 256 pi. There's my BRDT. All right, so we have the pieces that we need now. We have the RDT, which can be inserted here. We have R is eight, which can be inserted here. Okay, multiply the numerators together. Pies can cancel out. We can just reduce the fraction here. 25 over 4. Now, helium is pumped into the balloon. Uh, that's why we're getting a positive BVDT because that volume is increasing. Uh, the balloon is increasing over time. So we expect the surface area to also increase over time. So it makes sense that we're getting a positive value. Let's talk about the units here. Surface area, what's the unit for surface area? Square. 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 Yeah. There's a five and four for brain. Oh, what did I get? Okay. Okay. Are you busy? <laughs> okay, guys, I'll be right back. Okay, was there any question with number three? Okay, uh, four, uh, hopefully we recognize this Pythagorean theorem problem.
like your email that was okay. a while ago. Oh, okay. Because there was never a date. Yeah. Oh, she was so excited. Yeah. Sarah was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I will look for that and I'll add you to our team's page. Thank you. And also get a chance to thank you so much. Okay. And if you don't hear anything from me later today, just uh okay. send me a quick email. Yeah. Okay. Sarah Vicks. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, sorry, I may have to cut this uh, meeting a bit short, uh, session a bit short here, um, but um, hopefully, uh, you know, you recognize this as a problem that we did in class on the first day of, uh, uh, so this is just a matter of, of uh, Pythagorean theorem, and then remembering to do product rule for part B. Okay. Uh, sorry guys, I may need to jump on this, on this meeting for a little bit longer. All right, but I'll have another help session tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll continue to pick out problems from the homework to uh, to go over.